Welcome to a brief discussion on the principles of acid-base extraction. Let's begin by asking the question, why does it matter what the pH of the aqueous layer is when we actually perform an extraction? Okay. How does the pH of that aqueous layer really affect our ability to move organic compounds from one immiscible phase to another? In order to do this, we're going to use a compound with which we're all probably familiar by now, and that is phenol. We well, you know that phenol is not like your typical aliphatic alcohol because it's aromatic. Phenol can be deprotonated much more easily. The pKa of this compound is about 10, making it a very weak organic acid, but an organic acid nonetheless. And we're going to use this to our advantage so that we can predetermine where phenol will accumulate when we uh, conduct an acid-base liquid-liquid extraction. So let's take a look at a specific example. Here's our separatory funnel, charged with an organic solution of phenol, let's say an ether, and an aqueous layer. And if we zoom in closely to see what's going on at the phase boundary between these two immiscible liquids, we can watch what goes on. Recall that the top layer in this case is ether, making it the organic layer. And the lower layer is going to be an aqueous layer of pH 7. So this is buffered to neutrality with something like phosphate. In this case, when we first add the two layers, before any partitioning has occurred, all the dissolved phenol is in the original organic layer. After a significant amount of agitation, if we have equal volumes of organic and aqueous, we expect a certain amount of this compound, this phenol, to partition into the aqueous layer. The quantity which partitions is dictated by the partitioning coefficient, in this case 1.25. So if we were to use equal amounts of organic and aqueous layers, we expect approximately 4 ninths of the phenol to partition into the aqueous layer. If this is not an adequate amount for the method that I would like to develop, I have a uh, couple of choices. My first choice is to simply use a larger volume of aqueous solvent or multiple washes of aqueous solvent. But with a partitioning coefficient as low as 1.25, this may not be the best way for me to get all of my phenol separated from the organic mixture. So let's consider what happens if we begin to play with the pH of the aqueous layer. Again, let's say we have our separatory funnel charged with an ether solution of phenol. But in this case, we're not going to have an aqueous layer at pH 7. We're going to buffer the aqueous layer to pH 12. This is two units above the pKa of phenol, meaning that 99% of the dissolved phenol in the aqueous layer will be present as phenolate, not phenol. The phenolate anion is much more soluble in water. The consequence of this is that any phenol which dissolves in the aqueous layer becomes deprotonated. And the solubility of this anion is much greater, which means that there will be more and more of this phenol accumulating in the aqueous layer. Recall that partitioning coefficients are dictated by solubilities. In this case, the partitioning coefficient is much, much smaller than 1.25, indicating that a very, very large amount is accumulating in the aqueous layer. Now, I've placed much, much smaller than 1.25 instead of an actual number because the anion which is coordinating these phenolates is actually important. It depends on whether we use sodium hydroxide, potassium hydroxide, etc as our source of base. But regardless of that, when we're in the organic chemistry lab, we can be relatively certain that if we use a relatively strong base in the aqueous layer, a very large amount of phenol will partition into that layer as phenolate. And we have succeeded in moving more of it into the aqueous layer. This is why we use these buffer solutions during our washes, and this is why we carefully select them so that they are at least two pH units above or below the pKa of the compounds which we want to separate. 